Welcome to the Alpha Training and Consulting's online training program. Today's discussion is about what is a Z statistic? Remember, we offer ASQ certification preparation classes, so if you ever have need for that, please let me know. But now let's go to the whiteboard, discuss the Z statistic. All right, here we are at the whiteboard, and today we're going to talk about, as I already mentioned, the Z statistic. The Z statistic is very important. It's the most common statistic in all of statistics. So if you don't understand the Z statistic, you're probably not going to understand the rest of statistics. So it's of fundamental importance. Now the Z statistic is fundamentally used to measure distance. It's a unit of length for distance. So let's talk about that for a little bit. Here we have a ruler, say a one foot ruler, and we take that ruler and we divide it into 12 equal units. And 1 12th of this ruler we call, one foot ruler, we call 1 inch. Okay, fair enough. Pretty easy. Well, we do the same thing, similar thing in statistics, uh, only this time we're working with this distribution. And what we do with the distribution, the majority of the distribution, is we divide it into six equal lengths. That may not, may not be perfect, but we divide it into one-sixth equal lengths. And that one-sixth distance along this distribution here is called a standard deviation or a sigma. So this is very important. Sigma or standard deviation is one of the main things we study in statistics. We use it all the time, and that's what it is. You take the width of this distribution, divide it into six equal lengths, and that is a standard deviation. What's the purpose of standard deviation? Well, it only really has one purpose, and that's to measure distance. It's a unit of length. Just like the inch is a unit of length, uh, sigma is a unit of length. So they're similar. Uh, they both measure length, and they're a fraction of something that's very common. Uh, this normal distribution is very common. We divide it into six equal lengths and it's called a standard deviation, and it's a measurement of variation. So uh, variation means the width of this curve. So if you have more variation, you'll have a wider curve, which means sigma is larger. So it's a measure of variation, but we use it to measure distance. Now, if you say, well, we are going to use it to measure distance, then we must have a reference that we always measure from. And in statistics, what we measure from is that middle line, which we call the average. Okay. If it's a population average, we call it mu, and if it's a sample average, we would call it x bar. And sigma is a population value, standard deviation of the population. It would, we would call it s, sample standard deviation uh, for a sample. So there you go. Now, uh, let's move forward with this sigma thing. I'm going to erase this and get us a fresh distribution to draw from. And so here is the distribution. The Z statistic uh, is usually used for normal uh, distribution studies. Okay, the Z statistic is. Now, what is the Z statistic? Let me explain. Remember, sigma is used to do what? To measure distance. So I'm going to put something out here, and I'm going to call it the upper spec limit. Upper spec limit. Now, I do some math, and I figure it out that this uh, distance from the average, the average to the upper spec limit is, let's say, four sigmas away. It's four sigmas away. Like I say, it's a unit of length. We're just measuring distance. Where do we measure from? We always measure from the average. Okay. Now that you understand that, I can explain what the Z statistic is. That number there, 4, is the Z statistic. So if you looked at this picture and said, what's Z upper? Z upper meaning the distance above the average, Z upper to the upper spec limit there. Z is 4 sigmas. How many sigmas? 4. That is Z. Z is the number of sigmas. The number of standard deviations is Z. So if I was to change this, I could change this and say, okay, I have another distribution here. 
and it is two sigmas, two sigmas away from the spec limit. That's not as good as the last one. Why? Because when it's only that far away, then this is all scrap, anything above the upper spec limit. So we would rather have it further away, the spec limit's further away in units of sigma. Okay? But this one is two sigmas. Now, what can you do with the Z? What is the, well, let me ask you, what is the Z statistic? That's not a very good looking two. It looks like a Z. I think I can do better than that. So I'm going to make that a little more clear. And I don't know if that's more clear or not, but I tried. It's a fat marker. What can I say? This is two sigma. What, so what is Z upper? Z upper is how many, how many sigmas is this? Two. Okay. Z equals two. This is correct. And this problem, z upper, because it's going above the average, equals 2. Now, I could also do a z lower. Maybe z lower, that's the distance from the average to the lower spec limit. Notice we're always measuring from average. That's our datum, if you will, our reference for measurement. And let's say this is 2.75 sigmas. Okay, very interesting. So what's z lower? Z lower is how many sigmas? 2.75 sigmas. Then Z lower is 2.75. There we go. And that is what Z is. Z is the number of sigmas. Sigma is used to measure distance. What do we measure distance from? The average. And so that's pretty easy. We use it in more than just uh, distance to spec limits, as I'll show you here in a little bit. Uh, but before we get into another Z statistic, let's look up this Z statistic in the Z table. The Z table is going to tell me the proportion of the population that lies above the upper spec limit if I look up Z equals 2. So let's look up that table at Z equals 2. So here is the Z table. Notice it says Z. Remember what Z is, the number of sigmas. So we drop Z down to 2.00 there. Let me put it over here, 2.00. And it says if you go out 2.00 standard deviations from the average, and notice I go 2.0, that's my second zero right there, 2.00. It's 0 0.0228. That's the proportion of the population that falls above the upper spec limit. So 0 0.0228, let's go back to the whiteboard and put that number in. So here we are back at the whiteboard, and I wrote in that 0 0.0228 or 2.28%, and uh, now I have an estimated scrap rate here above the upper spec limit. Now let's look up the Z lower, which is 2.75. So let's go back to the Z table and look up 2.75. So here's the Z table. I drop down to 2.7, and then this next column would be 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75. So that was our Z lower statistic. So it'll be 0 .00298. So let's go back to the whiteboard and put that in our picture there, 0 .00298. All right, so now I've looked up Z upper in the Z table and Z lower in the Z table, which was the 0 0.0298. Now, if I want to know the overall estimated scrap rate, I would just add those together. So I can do that. Let me take out the calculator here. And I go 0 0.0228 plus 0 0.00298 equals, and that gives me my overall scrap, scrap total, equals 0 0.02578. And there we have it. My total scrap rate is uh, 0 0.02578. And so if you multiply that by 100, it would give you 2.578% scrap is what we'd estimate uh, scrap to be. Now, there is a weakness in this calculation in that this average, we wish it would just stay still, 
but it doesn't. It kind of moves around. You know, you have change in shifts, change in temperature, change in humidity, change, change, change. So this average tends to move around a little bit. We did not take that into account, nor will we take it into account in today's discussion. But just so you know, uh, there is a problem with this. There's going to probably be some error because the average does roam a little bit. Uh, it does so very slowly, but it will move around over time. All right, now let's shift our shift gears into another topic, okay? And what we're going to talk about now is we're not going to measure the distance from one from the average of the distribution to the upper spe uh, to the spec limits. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to look at two distributions. Maybe we work in a some clinical study. Okay. In a medical lab, let's say. Okay. And where I colored in there, that's where the tail of this red distribution uh, goes below that average. Okay, that's what that we're talking about. And guess what? We measure the distance between these two. So that's the other Z that I was that we're going to talk about. We measure this distance from one average to another average. And so that will be a Z statistic. The number of sigmas that lie between the red curve and the blue curve. So see, Z can be used for anything that we're measuring distance. Uh, between distributions or from the average to a spec limit, it doesn't matter, but Z just means the number of sigmas. How far away is it? How far away is something in units of sigma? Okay? And uh, the reason we do this is we're trying to answer the question, did something change? So let's say in this example, this one is tumor growth rate. Okay, we're trying to solve cancer. Tumor growth rate. And uh, this is with no treatment. This is the variation in tumor growth rate. But then we have a treatment, and we apply the treatment to the tumor. And it shifts the distribution over, and it looks like we slow the growth rate of the tumor with the treatment. But I want to know if that's real or if it's just random numerical differences. And the way you do that is you calculate the number of sigmas between there, in other words, the Z statistic. Then let's say the Z statistic equals, I don't know, 2.05. Okay, 2.05. Then all we have to do is go to the Z table, look up 2.05, and find out what that is, what that overlap is. So let's go to the Z table and see what that overlap is. And then I'll discuss that further. So here we are at the Z table. We go down to 2.05. Notice that's the 5 column there, 2.05. And it's uh, 0.0202. So let's go back and put that on our drawing. And uh, let me see that one more time, 0.0202. So here we are back at the whiteboard. Notice I put that in, the overlap, that this red distribution overlaps the mean of the blue distribution. That proportion that lies above that average from the red distribution is 0 0.0202, or if you multiply it by 100, it'd be 2.02%. Okay? And what does that mean? That means if I said, hey, this uh, treatment impacts uh, cancer growth rate, tumor growth rate, that is the probability that I'm wrong. But say, okay, you said that it made a difference. This is the probability that you're wrong in making that decision, 2.02%. Now, the problem is you always have to take a risk. And in statistics, by the way, they usually call this the P-statistic, which in our discussion is the probability that you're wrong. Wrong when you say what? Wrong when you said, I think it changed. Oh, you think it changed? Okay. This is your probability that you're wrong. 
you're, there's always going to be a probability that you're wrong because these distributions are continuous. They never end, so there's always going to be overlap. And so this is the P statistic, and then you have to have an alpha risk. Alpha risk is the risk you're willing to take. And let's say I'm willing to take a 5% risk of being wrong. That's my alpha risk. That's the most common alpha risk out there is 5%. So if I'm willing to take a 5% chance of being wrong, but in this one, I'm really taking a 2% chance of being wrong, then my p-value is less than my alpha risk, so I would accept this, that it did change. Now, if it was, let's say, 7%, then 7% is greater than 5%, so I'd say it's statistically insignificant. So if the p-value is less than the alpha risk, we call it statistically significantly different. And so hopefully that helped you understand the Z statistic a little more and how powerful it is in helping us solve problems. Now remember, if you need any help preparing for that ASQ certification exam, please keep us in mind. Thank you, and have a great day. Goodbye.